Technology is constantly changing. More than 30% of nurse educator colleagues report that they are frustrated or simply feel overwhelmed when it comes to technology and understanding how it all works. Welcome everybody to Dr. Sellers Educate. If you are returning from a previous snapshot, we're delighted that you're here. If this is the first time, we would like to welcome you to our YouTube channel or to our podcast, depending on how you are reviewing this snapshot. We are continuing to focus on technology. As we know, so many nurse educator colleagues have reported that this is a frustrating part of their role. 50% of healthcare organizations have reported that they will be moving forward with making changes in technology related to cost savings. Okay, so what does this mean for us? Well, we certainly don't want our students to be left behind. We don't want to be left behind as nurse educator colleagues. And so we have to make sure that we are integrating core curricular elements to stay updated with the technologies that our students, as well as our clinical faculty, can expect to interact with. And number two, we want to make sure that we are fully equipped with the competencies, with the knowledge that we need in order to best support the learning experience. One of the biggest frustrations for our nursing students is when they are faced with circumstances related to technology that becomes a barrier to learning. And we do not want to introduce that as another reason for our students to not be successful, as another reason for our students not being able to focus on the development of the clinical judgment skills that we know are essential in order for our students to make the safe patient care decisions possible in the clinical setting. What else do we know about that? this data? Well, we also know that part of our focus in looking at our curricular elements is to bridge healthcare and innovation in nursing education. It's a great opportunity to, to be able to do that with our students as they are already in the mode for learning. Let's take a look at our thought-provoking question. All right, so of course, this is about technology. So in the context of integrating technology into nursing education, which of the following strategies best exemplifies a nurse's, a nurse educator's competency in utilizing technology to advance learning outcome? We have A, designing a lecture to teach complex clinical skills and decision-making in a safe, controlled environment. B, implementing an e-learning platform that supports asynchronous learning and enables students to access interactive content, quizzes, and discussion boards at their convenience. Or C, using presentation software for all lessons to maintain consistency in teaching methods and ensure all students receive the same information. All right, so I want you to think about, in context of this question, we always want you to think about two things, okay? And this is for when you get to the c &E exam as well. Number one, take a look and see, what is this question actually asking me? You can expect in the stem of the question, there may be a distractor. And so you wanna hone in on exactly what it, this question is asking you, number one. And then number two, what is it that I know for sure about content related to this question? Now, as you are preparing for the CE exam, or if you're just focusing on becoming a better nurse educator, we always like for you to use the detailed test blueprint. You can find this in the candidate handbook on the NLN website. This is going to help ensure that you stay focused on content related to each of these competencies to help you achieve success. If you haven't printed out that study worksheet already, we want you to go ahead and take a minute just to do that. And then on that study worksheet, we want you to write down today's date, whatever date you're watching this snapshot. Second of all, we want you to write, write down an objective. What is it that you wanna walk away with having a better understanding as it relates to technology and how we can help support student success related to the innovative teaching strategies that we wanna bring into our classroom to best prepare our nursing students for practice, okay? And then hopefully you're writing down your seven week study plan. How many hours are you gonna focus on reviewing the content to ensure you are successful on the c &E exam? All right, so now let's talk about some of the core areas of digital transformation that have been identified in this article. You will also find the link to this resource right here in our description, because we want you to do deeper review of this, to, to take a deeper review of the content that has been reported 
um, by way of this article because it explores what healthcare leaders shared around the country related to their um, technology infrastructure over the next several years. So one key element was related to the core of their technology systems in place, such as the EHR, the enterprise resource planning, the core cloud components as well. So these were just a few. And then the next element that we wanted to kind of tease out as part of our conversation today really are those digital applications and tools for consumers, such as remote patient monitoring, wearables, customer relationship management systems. These are all applications and tools that help our patients as well as us as nurse educators and nurses as well to ensure that we are up to date on what these technologies are going to possibly look like in the future to best equip our nursing students as well as ourselves with the skills that we need to, stay, to keep up with this advanced technology. Artificial intelligence, it, it keeps popping up everywhere you go. I can do a search on Google and all of a sudden it will say, do you want us to um, provide artificial intelligence for you to help you with the search? So it's amazing how much AI is popping up in our everyday life. And it's here to stay, it's not gonna go away. So how can we best leverage the technologies that we have in our educational spaces and our healthcare spaces to better serve our students and to best serve our patients? And then as we wrap up, we wanna talk a little bit more about this thought provoking question. So if you chose B as the best option and the correct option for this thought provoking question, you are correct, which is implementing an e-learning platform that supports asynchronous learning and enables students to assess interactive content quizzes and discussion boards at their convenience. Now, if you chose A, designing a lecture, what I want you to think about is the fact that lecturing is a form of passive learning, okay? It aligns with um, what we call pedagogy, right? The pedagogical, pedagogical teaching practices that do focus on that sage on the stage framework, um, the content expert really being that teacher, that facilitator of knowledge. And we know there's a role for pedagogy in the classroom. We certainly want students to know that we are the expert whenever it comes to teaching them about sterile technique as an example. However, we don't want students to stay there, right? This isn't the only type of learning we wanna bring into the classroom experience. We want to be that coach where we're able to partner with the students to support the learning process. The COBE experiential learning model really digs deep into these four different components on the cycle of learning that happens. We want our students to be able to move through those cycles of learning in a way that they're able to grasp content, apply these concepts, analyze them to create and really make decisions about patient care practices that are safest for our patients at the bedside. All right, so this is gonna wrap up our snapshot focusing on technology. And this is what we want you to do, okay, is our final point. We want you to take a look at the test blueprint. There are four competencies that align with the content that we focused on today. We also want you to take a look at the Hallmarks of Excellence document. There is a link also located right here in the description. These were actually published in 2020 by NLN. And this is what we want you to do with both of these documents. We want you to create a checklist, okay? A checklist for you as the nurse educator. And we want you to walk through every single step as it relates to some of the core elements that we've talked about, okay? Number one, how do we best prepare ourselves as a nurse educator to be ready for all of these technological advances that are coming our way? Okay, so that's number one, write that on your checklist. However, you're gonna best prepare for that, looking at faculty development opportunities, continuing education. Number two, we want you to write down one strategy that you're gonna to use today in your classroom, even going further and looking at your curriculum plans for next year to help our students be better equipped with the technology, technological advances that are coming. Okay, so number one is about you. Number two is about how we best serve our students. And then number three, I want you to think about the community. What are the curricular elements that we can include in our curriculum to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our community. Now, one that comes to mind for me is educating as many people as we can about artificial intelligence and the benefit of that. Okay, so thinking about telehealth and all of the um, 
the reach, the broad reach that was allowed for when it comes to healthcare, whenever we were in the pandemic, even now we're still using different elements of telehealth. So just thinking about how AI, how telehealth and virtual simulation, right? There's a role for that as well. When you think about artificial intelligence to help support the student learning process. All right, so those are your homework items for this snapshot. We're so happy that you joined us today. Reach out if you have questions, info at Dr. Sellers Educate, and we will see you next time. Have a great one, everybody.